Good job. Voices of my heart. Voices of my heart. Voices of my heart will evoke truth, justice. Righteousness, reciprocity, balance, order, and harmony. Oh, to be conscious, gifted, and black. Conscious, gifted, and black. Mashiru Nefer family, that means good evening and meta netter. I'm Queen Mother Eni Tere, a set of Kua Kiti Haru with the Temple of Het Haru, where our founder is Baba Saba Amori Sneferu. And you're listening to the voices of my aunt, and we now have our own channel. Also, I want you to tune in to our Ma Karu 314 and Paradigm Shift 314. Please subscribe to all channels and like. So um, I'm going to do our Hesse, it's a chant, I'll say it in Meta Netter, and then I will quote it in English. Pa Netter, Ampu Pa Ma'at, Ank Wais Dejeb, Ank Unja Seneb, Uben Nefer Akar Pa In Buharu Ma'at, and English that translates to how sweet is the truth, life, power, stability, life, prosperity, and health, rising always in divine excellence with Ma'at, every day, all day. Ashe. Ashe. Family, when I say Ashe, it simply means that we agree and we're on the same accord. Now, our topic for tonight's show is called, Why Do We Accept Nigger and Bitch as Words of Endurement? Ashe. Ashe. I'm going to do a quote real quick before we get started. We wonder why we're not making progress. I can't call myself a bitch, a hoe, a gangster, and a thug every day and then get up and do something constructive. That's impossible. And that's by our very own late great Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. I say. Okay, we have suffered for 400 years of being forced to hate and devalue who we are. And this has mentally destroyed our culture, our pride, our dignity, and self-love. So just as we took on their religion, their language, and way of life, we also took on their mistreatment of ourselves as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have a wonderful panel this evening. I'm gonna allow the panel to introduce themselves to the audience. Go ahead, Queen. I'm Kuja Seneb. I am Queen Mama Sabang Julia Sabangale Ma'at. I am the co-founder of the International Black Freedom Alliance. And I'm a writer, I'm a mother, I'm a community activist. I am definitely comedic and I fight for my people because my people are the only people I care about. It's that simple. Ashay. 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 Go ahead, Queen. Hi, I'm Queen Analika Saket Asante from the tip of Het Heru. Ashay. Ashay. <laughs> Come on, King. I'm Usa Amos Sarah Sekinare from the Temple of Hederu, and I'm also the MOD of the Black Panther Party of St. Louis Chapter. Um, I say. I say. I'm King Kyrie Jamil Aminda. I am a Black entrepreneur in Temple of Heru. All right, I say. Okay, so we got Temple of Heru in the house, I say. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get started with the first question. And what I'll do is I will call on you all so that we won't talk on top of each other. Ashe? Ashe. Okay. So the first question is, a few of us on the panel may have used the words in the past, but tell me what changed your thinking as to why you no longer utilize them anymore. However, if you still use the words nigger and bitch, tell me why. And in what circumstances would you be using those words? And I'm going to get started with our uh, wonderful Mama Julia. I don't use the words anymore. Okay. Can you tell us when the last time you think you might have had those words in your vocabulary? Well, okay, wait. So I'm a writer, right? Yes. And I write creative fiction. Okay. I write historical fiction. And every now and again, those words are necessary in my writing. Only okay. because it pertains to whatever it might be that I'm writing about. And I may need those words. I say. So in, in my life, in my journey, not with my family, with my friends, because they're demeaning. And knowledge itself makes me unfit to be a slave anymore. I should. can't have a slave mind and continue to apply those words to my people. I've never applied those words to myself because I don't see me as that. So in order to live in integrity and to be able to reach my people, not words that are common for me in my life. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. Okay, what about you, King Kyrie? Can you uh, tell us if you have used those words in the past, what made you stop using those words? Or if you currently use those words, tell us in what uh, situations that you may use nigger and bitch? Um, never use bitches, never applied that language to anyone. I never, so that okay. one's out of my vocabulary. Okay. So that one. Niggers, uh, I can listen to it, and I've thought about this when we have the subject. I can listen to it in rap. I, you know, I can hear it in music, but Use it towards people. I, I I I have never verbally called anybody uh, directly a nigger or a bitch, but you know, but you, said you can listen to it and rap. I felt guilty when I when I thought about the conversation, and I'm listening to this music. I'm like, oh, this is the subject this week, and uh, uh -huh. <laughs> right. I, I I will say for me, real quick. Um, back in the day. I can't remember when uh, this song came out, but um, it was by Easy E, and it was called "Bitch Better Have My Money," right? So the song itself had a really nice beat. You know, it had like a really nice beat. But back then, I was not as conscious as I am now, and so it didn't bother me as much. So fast forward, say 20 years, and I like the beat, but I can't do the song. <laughs> I can't do the song. And, and I'm about 10 years on you. So it, <laughs> it you never sounded appealing. I remember the song. Right, yeah. It so, was, I mean, it, it had an extra, extraordinary beat, but just, just that word B is derogatory and like, I can't, I can't accept it. Never used, never. Now I have, even in frustration, it might slip out, you know. Okay, okay. Frustration. Right, or maybe anger. But it's not endurement, you know. Okay. Endearing. Okay. okay. No, but I'm okay. old. What about you, uh, Queen Analika? <laughs> yes, I've used the word, I have used the word, and well, to be honest, I still do. You know, when I'm talking to my close friends, um, I know that may sound crazy, you know. But it doesn't I'm sound crazy, sis. <laughs> I'm guilty of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, 
when I came into consciousness, I did stop using it, but I did revert back, you know, now, did you, did you in my revert, old way. Right. Um, did you revert back only though when you get around those particular buddies yes. and that's the way they talk? Yes. Okay. Well, it's only with my best friend. Like I don't do it with, you know, everybody, you okay. know, still working on myself, you know. <laughs> I say, I say, thanks for your honesty, queen. It's all yeah. good. Oh, yeah. We all we all had to grow. We all had to develop. I say, I say. Okay, uh, King Usa, do you still use those words sometimes? And if not, you if you use them in the past, tell us why at this point that you don't use them. I use that word, both words, a lot, only to be, to describe. The person, it describes the person so well at that moment, especially during frustrations. Okay. Um, I still, you know, I, yeah. Let, let it go. Let it go, brother. <laughs> let it go. It's all right. I mean, people, people just, when they, when they behave like a nigga, I'm gonna just say it throughout just through our anger. You know, we're in a revolution. Right. Nigga, I'm I'm gonna talk to you. You wanna like it, you're gonna respond and look up when I say nigga. So there you have it, nigga. But but B word bitch, I wouldn't I, I that's only I don't I don't use it. Okay. I don't use it. So 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 do you call your your buddies or your close family members niggas? Or do you just use it when somebody makes you angry? They're acting in a, a, a crazy be, uh, behavior, like form, or yeah, I use I use it towards family, everybody. Okay. Even females too, when they acting, acting niggerish. Okay. Can you can you just describe for me um when somebody is acting niggerish? Just give me a quick example. Can I answer that? Um not when you may. You, you may after he gets finished, I'll I'll let anybody who wants to comment on it feel free. Let's say you find out McDonald's have, you know, they put any and everything in the chicken nuggets. And you want to be a vegan, but you still go back and eat McDonald's and the chicken nuggets. And nigga. you, they acting like a nigga. Okay. Yeah, to me, okay. to me, that's what that is. Okay, okay, King Kyrie, you had something to say on that. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, my experience last was, I'm coming down the road, two lanes, two cars traveling in that lane. I'm going a different direction. One of the cars took my lane all the way up to me where I had to move him for him. He's in the wrong lane. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, man, you almost killed me. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Out of, out of frustration and, frustration is, and, it is and, never. and anger. Yeah. No, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you, did you see the driver? Oh yeah, yeah. I had to so, move over. Before. Was the driver black or white? Oh, the, it, 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 any ignorance, it, 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 it's not <laughs> color. It's no, no, I'm, right. I, no, I'm just trying to clarify. I, I just wanted well, to be no. black. But okay, the, but that, you're saying if if he would have been John, he would have still been a nigga. Whoever would have that behavior. Okay, okay, I got you. It's a behavior, right, so, not a color. Like the, brother. I'm still here. like the brother. Too, I wanted to add on to my answer too that uh, if I say nigga in certain situations versus nigger, if that if that makes okay, sense. Okay, break that down for me, uh, King Osa. Now you, when you say nigga, you mean like n i g g a? Yeah. Okay. What what does when what what's clarifying for nigga? I mean, one it it became like a like a slang to me anyway, so it's more it's like a buddy you know a buddy buddy word for me. So right, so you'll see I, your you'll see your friend. You be like, "What's up, nigga?" Yeah, that's my nigga. Oh, okay. 
but but I look at it still as a uh, uh, enlightened nigga, if that makes sense. No, no, come on with it and explain, but, brother. I've also learned uh, just the word, just the syllables "nit," like "n" and "g," are uh, related to royalty, you know, in African in African culture. So, right, but that's that's I mean, not Nigeria. Kinda, I kinda, I, Huh? Nigeria. No, uh, Naga Naga Kushites. Okay. Yeah. Um, but so it's pronounced. How is it pronounced? Naga. Okay. That, Naga. Okay, I right. get that. But I've I'm, learned the throughout history it, it turned into nig, you know, nig nigger and nigga, <laughs> and you know the European turned turned it around into you know nigger and you know, and, and everything that we look at it as, but I, I start to, you know, I look at it now as, you know, a better word of, you know, hey, that's another king. That's a nigga. Okay. Nigas. Okay. So let me, let me do this, guys. Let me backtrack a bit and let me just uh, give you the definitions of the word bitch and nigger. Okay. So bitch is a slang word. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the term bitch comes from the old English word by C or by G, meaning female dog, which dates to around 1000 CE. Dog has long been used as an insult towards both women and men. Now let's tackle nigger. Nigger in the English language, the word nigger is an ethnic slur typically directed at black people especially African-Americans. The word originated in the 18th century. It's probably the most offensive word in English. Its decree of offensiveness has increased markedly in recent years, although it has been used in a derogatory manner since at least the Revolutionary War in 1778. And that was uh, Great Britain and Northern uh, American, the Revolutionary War. Ashe? Ashe. Okay, so does anybody want to go into a little bit more detail about question one? Or are we moving on to question two? Um, you know, about 10 minutes before I rejoined the call, I was tagged in a post. <laughs> and this post was some inboxing between a sister friend and a white woman. The white woman saying that she she's an activist, she protests, whatever, on our behalf. And because of doing so, her people have pushed her out and told her, you know, if you want to get back in, leave them alone. Mm. Leave them folks alone. She says she uh, <clears throat> is anti-racism so I don't remember this all of this stuff word for word because it was a series of inboxing between the two women okay I felt no sympathy for her. neither did my friend and the other friends that she tagged into the post I felt no sympathy for this white woman if your people threw you out because you say you doing work on our behalf then that's part of the consequences you know, if that's something you choose. I say. So I did tell her bye, bitch, at the okay. end of my comment. Okay. And, and you, comment. Right, because that's how, that's how you felt. Yeah, because it's easy for me, me to use that word with them. Okay. I, 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 I agree. Applying that word to them. I got when you. When it comes to us, that's where I have the problem at. I don't like to hear my sisters refer to themselves with that word. I don't like to hear my brothers refer to themselves with that word. But I do have an understanding of how, as the king said, they can use the word and not have negative connotations because they found different meaning with a different tone for that word so 
I, I just thought about that. Yeah, she she's a bitch. Okay. White woman Ashe. on the post. Yeah. I say, I say. Okay, let's move on to the second question. Why do you feel that black folks use nigger and bitch towards one another, but regularly you do not often hear in the public Europeans communicating with one another, calling each other honkies and bitches, Mexicans calling each other <clears throat> spicks and bitches, Asians referring to their loved ones or their buddies as chinks or bitches, Italians speaking to one another using wop or bitches, or even the Jews calling each other kai kikes or kikis or bitches. So why do you all feel as though we have the tendency, are we kind of comfortable doing that with our people? And I'm gonna start with uh, Queen Analika. Well, I think it's um, a generational thing. It's been a part of our, it has been a part of our culture uh, for many years. I mean, you can even go back to some of the old slave audios um, of you will hear the enslaved people call each other niggers, you know. Um, it's interesting that you said the enslaved people because, <laughs> because mentally we're still there. If yeah. we, but, but go ahead, go ahead. Okay, and um, and then like fast forward to like the 80s when the uh, the rappers took the visceral term of, of niggers and flipped it to nigga, you know, but that was, um, and they started embracing it. So, which I know that was for like the white media, the, the white, um, Record labels, you know. Record to, industry. Yeah. And um, let me see what else. Um, and for us going to uh, the other cultures, I, I grew up, I went to a white school, so I did hear them say, call each other niggas, I mean, not niggas, call each other kites and, you know, white trash and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Out, out in public? Yeah, okay. yeah, and um, but you know, I don't be around them like that anymore, so I don't hear people say that now, you know. Now, were they saying it uh, mostly in a joking way, or what they said when they got angry at one another? I, I've heard it when they uh was angry and uh and jokingly, so okay, mm -hmm. okay, Ashe, thank you for sharing. All right, okay, what about you, King Kyrie? Again, um, it's an age thing. Um, it's just getting more comfortable. Um, studying for this, I remember the movie Superfly and the Curtis Me, me too. <laughs> they wouldn't allow that now. So the, the rap was just a little nigga, bitch, and it's maybe once in that song. But if you go back to our old movies, old uh, Curtis Mayfield, we've been comfortable with it and we're getting more comfortable and comfortable with using niggas. Bitches in the other term, now that's too offensive. And, you know, so that's not, but niggas is getting more comfortable. So I know as you said back, back then, so do you, what do you attribute that to? So we, so let's go back 50 years from now. Okay, as compared to how we were living, what we were going through as a people, um, you know, with civil rights, it was, it was, you know, fighting for black pride, you know, black power to the people in another generation, right? And so fast forward and we're, we're comfortable with it. And we've kind of took those words and, uh, you know, changed them to fit what we do, how we feel. And so uh, anybody can answer this. I know it's not a question, but what do we think that is attributed to? Because I, I don't, I think that it was used less and Mama Julia and King Kyrie, you all can correct me because I'm, I just turned 50, I'm half of a hundred. So I was born in 1970. 
So I got my wisdom people on here with me to help me. So I don't believe that some 40, 50 years ago that you guys were walking around calling each other niggas uh, as opposed to what we deal with in 2020. And I'm not saying that nobody ever done it, but I don't know if that was acceptable. Can you guys help me? We didn't really have a lot of that in the music. Same music you are listening to now. I mean, I'm not far from you. So same music. Okay. Um, and it, it was a little different. It wasn't so harsh. It wasn't so in your face, angry, like, this is who you are to me. This is what I mean. It, it wasn't like that. The, the music industry changed the tone and the voice of our people because everybody wants to rap and that sells. That's what sells. So I think that people have incorporated it more into their lives due to that. And not they don't get angry with one another. The B word was a fighting word to me. I got put out of school a lot. Mm -hmm. it's, you it's can, still a fighting go, word it, for me. It, it is for real. I mean, I've tempered, I've tempered myself a lot more now than what I used to be, because I know that the people or person who may use that word and direct it to me they might still be asleep. And because I'm not, I have an obligation to them in a sense. I say. So I would say there would be a warning. Don't do not do that, sis. Right. That's, that's the wrong word. You can come up with something else. Call me by my name. Right. But not that. Now, I can't tell you that I'm so tempered that if, the, if it was continued, that I wouldn't revert back to that girl. Right. Like that. I probably would. But I think they don't feel the same about those words because they don't really know how devaluing those words were to our people and are to us now. They so, just don't get the same sense of that. Right. And I guess I'm wondering how that happened over generations. It I'm happened wondering about music, television, yes. society yes. saying that it's okay. Like 10, 10, 20 years from now, there may be people saying, how did this LGBTQIA thing get so deep in our community? Right. Because society says that that's what it is. It's okay. It's everywhere. It's on TV. It's in the music. It's in the writings. It's everywhere that you look. That's how those two words evolved because okay. they were more in our face. It was more open and accepted. Okay, King Usa, what about you? Do you hear other uh, ethnic groups calling each other these uh, derogatory words? as much as we do i've seen some some white people call each other nigga fighting mm -hmm. and and it didn't bother me at all i just say have at it <laughs> but um yeah better but i say um still like like since we even though we changed the meaning of the word to the to a particular generation like the few this generation we're in now we use that word in a, you know, as a term to endear me. So I say, hey, we can just go ahead and use it to our advantage. You know, we can get along using it. Why not? You know. Um, tell, tell me how I you still, use I still, it. Hmm? Okay. Tell me okay, how so, you use it to your advantage. Um, I could, I can go outside and say, hey, Hey, what's up, my nigga? Or I can say, hey, brother, see, you know, and, and, and see how many I'm gonna get to come, come, you know, come help me achieve what I'm trying to do. 
you know, and nine times out of ten, but I just say, hey, brother, or or say something, something else other than, hey, hey, what's up, hey, hey, what's up, my nigga? He not gonna really, it's not gonna really click the same way. Yeah, that's you know, deep. He's gonna be like, he's gonna be like, like, it's that's deep, brother. That's deep. Answer. Um, but still, um, because I'll tell you, sometimes when I'm out in the open and I see my beautiful black sisters and I say, how are you, queen? They look at me like I said some bad, and I'm right. saying I'm saying some good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm I'm respecting you as who you are, and just right. because you don't know it, I'm still gonna respect you in that manner. And I sometimes I just get no response. Right, but I don't just say it to just random people, just just to a random brother and be like, "Hey, what's up, my nigga?" I don't. It's just somebody right. I know. I hear you. You know. Right, but I guess I guess what I was getting at is I. I'm wondering if you if you say, "Hey, uh, niggas, can y'all what can y'all come and help me move this move this car or push the car?" I'm just wondering why they can't be, why they can't be called brothers or kings. I, I mean, to me, to me, it just seems to be a mental, a psychological something going on, especially when you're not understanding that king and brother is so much better than nigga. <laughs> I, guess right. what, I guess what I'm saying, so. But right now we're trying to reach a certain audience, you know, when it comes to, you know, we got to speak their language at times. Okay. All right, so let's move on to uh, question number three. When you were a child, was nigger and bitch used in your home among your family and friends? If so, why or why not? And explain your answer. We're gonna start with you, King Kyrie. Was it used in your home? No. Um, now, um, no, it was not used in the home. Uh, it, it wasn't even discussed to use, but uh, we, we tend to put this on rap now because that's the newest thing. I remember on television, you heard it a lot more than you do now. So the word nigga has been watered down among us when we communicate with each other. Because you remember Sanford and Son, Good Time, all those programs use nigga a lot. Now you can't say it on TV. You know, okay. we just made it, we on code using it with each other, but we can't use, the code is don't use it in public with white folks. Or with <laughs> That's, 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 that's the past, that's the code. <laughs> that's the code. No, hey, don't call me no nigga in front of white people, even if you're being friendly. You know, so. Okay, all right. What about you, Queen Analika? Well, it was rarely, uh, my parents rarely used it. Um, I never heard my mom call her friends bitches. Um, but my stepfather, when, you know, my stepfather would call <laughs> my brothers niggers, but it was like, you know, out of anger, and like if I did hear my mom say "bitch," it was because she was upset. You know. Okay. Okay. All right. What about you, Mama Julia? Was it used at your home when you were going coming up? Yeah. Not not often. I'm one of eight siblings, and we fought sometimes. So. Somebody might say the word, one of them words. When my parents weren't at home, when they were in the house, so anywhere near, we knew better. In public, we knew better. If you were with friends, then, you know, the word just come out, both of them. Yeah. But when we were around elders, when we were just out in public, period outside of friends and other family members. No, my dad didn't call us out our names. My stepmother, we didn't go through that. So not in that way, but you know, on the low where they can't hear you, yeah. Right. And so it was, uh, respect was a big thing. Huge, huge. and that's what's lost today respect is lost. Now, 
I hear this generation say, um, I ain't got to respect you just because you grown. I'm grown too. I'm right. 18. I'm over 18. Whatever. I'm That's grown true. too. Right. We couldn't do that. If an right. adult was disrespectful towards me, I had to go home and tell my parents what the situation was. And they took care of that. And that's how I raised my sons. Don't, don't get unruly with adults. I say. Come and tell me. Tell your daddy and let us handle that. And that's what they did. So it's so different now. It's so, it's just a so different it, generation. It almost sounds like we're saying that it may have something to do with uh, parent rearing and how it changed. You yeah. know, I know that parents um, nowadays have got much younger, of course, than 20 or 30 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was teaching at St. Louis Public School, not as a teacher, but a TA too, um, there was grandmothers who their age were like, they were very young. I mean, the grandmothers were having babies, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, but you know, my big mama, was at least you know 65 not 45 right mm -hmm. so i i guess you know it could have something to do with the um changes of the uh, age the maturity level and all of that combined i say i say i think so i i think also that it has to do with big mama Papa, mama, daddy, and siblings, and so on, not being so close around each other anymore. Where a big mama could lean over and pop you real quick. Right. And Papa could call you and come here because you know that was just wrong. We don't really have much of that anymore. Like, it's not so much that the parents are so much younger. It's that the parents of the young people who are having these children are doing what their children are doing. Mm. I study census records doing genealogy research and a lot of other records. The young women were young having children back then. 16, 17, 18. 12, 13, getting married, maybe not having children, then a shotgun wedding have to happen because this man got this 12, 13 year old pregnant and families start. So I don't know that it's so much as age. I think it's more that the, the teachings are no longer there. Right. Yeah, and that's why I also said respect because even, even if they were getting pregnant young and having families at a young age, there was a sense of integrity. There was a sense of respect. There was a sense mm -hmm. of, no, that's, you don't do that. This is what you do. You know, there so, was shame. Yes. <laughs> no shame anymore. Right. I say. Okay. Um, King Usa, what about you? Was that a word used in your home? No, and it wasn't. It wasn't never discussed either. You know, I I never, I never, you know, used such words in my house. So, I, so you picked that up from uh, being out in and about. Pretty much out being out in the world, you know, and seeing seeing how really ignorant people get, you know, they push, they push your buttons to where you got to use them words. Okay. All right. Let's go on to question four. If a European called you a bitch or a nigger, would you feel the same level of offensiveness as you would feel if a black person called you a bitch or a nigger? And if so, explain your response. I'm gonna start with you, uh, Queen Anlika. Well, again, as ignorant <laughs> as it may sound, nobody's gonna call me a bitch unless you're close to me like that. 
and um you know it is going to be a problem if you do but you know the word is really offensive and disrespectful mm -hmm. So, so if you at the store, you have, let's say you at the grocery store, mm -hmm. and uh, Julie think you got in front of her, and then mm -hmm. Julie made a mistake and called you a nigga. Um, Julie gonna get cussed out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so let's use the same scenario with Tamika. If Tamika gonna get she gonna get cussed out too. <laughs> okay. All right. I got you. All right. What about you, uh, Mama Julia? <laughs> Julie gonna get cussed out. <laughs> I'm a, and I'm gonna push her buttons to make her wanna step so I can beat her ass. <laughs> Tamika, Tamika just gonna get cussed out and I'm gonna try to tell her gone on about your business. You gonna give her a chance? You gonna give Tamika a chance? You gonna get a chance because me and Tamika have the same experiences, right? Me and that KBs don't have no experiences like that. No, so I, I'd be getting her back for what her ancestors did to mine that they couldn't do back to hers. It's All different. right, Ashay. Ashay. Okay, King Kyrie. What about you? I agree with the sister. Uh, European takes it another level. I could give my brothers and sisters a pay. Okay. What about what about a European that's uh, you know, we have some Europeans that uh grow up with us, you know, they they hang out with us, yeah. they rap with us, they dance like we do. And sometimes they even try to sound like we do. I don't even like that. <laughs> would you Would you give them a pass? No. 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 Okay. So we, you all saying no? You wouldn't give them a pass? Put somebody no. married to one. That's a good one for no, them. No. Somebody interracially married. That's a good question for them. Well, I mean, we can discuss that too, because to me, it would, uh, yeah, it would kind of be the same thing, right? Right. That, that's a good one. But no pass for me. None, none, no. No friends like that. You cross the line. You, you can't get that comfortable. Okay. All right. How as a people can we begin to discard, get rid of, flush it down the toilet, get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> be gone <laughs> with nigger and bitch in our community amongst one another because he, here's I, I kind of feel like the derogatory words match the derogatory events and different things that we went through as a people and you know especially in slavery time when the word was used you know, from Massa and the overseers. And then it's kind of like we picked it up and we we using it against each other. But then we feel because we put another spin on it, you know, like we did with the uh, hog malls, like, you know, with the we, we made the, the chillings good because we season them a certain way. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we, we take it, but the thing is that it's not ours to begin with. Right. So, so how do we begin or do we begin? Do we give it back? Come on, King. Oh, I see it, King. Oh, so let it out. Go ahead. <laughs> when I say change, you gotta look at look at what the word what the word means, or what is what is what the derogatory way it means and See how it applies to us and, and change it from there instead of taking the word away. You know, why why is nigga a derogatory term? We gotta fix that before we just change, you know, before we can take away the word. So it's a social construct that has to be right, changed. But I, I think and and I agree with you, but I think nigga 
is a derogatory word because since the 18th century, the word was established for that. That's, that's what the word was for. That, that, that's how the, the word originated. They, 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 you know, they said that it's the most offensive word in English, right? So, so when you say that we should not get rid of the word, you mean we should not get rid, rid of the word and just kind of we I say I I say we change what gives the word its meaning. So like we we gotta change ourselves first. Okay. I agree. And when you say we gotta change ourselves, you mean our mentality. Yeah, our mentality, you know, we have to actually have some kind of economic power. We, you know, we don't we don't have a country of our own, you know. So right now we are in the in that we are uh, we are niggas. You know what I'm saying? If we want to look at it as a whole, we don't speak our own language. We we hear we don't make our own underwear. You know, we in that stage. We're in that that mindset right now. So we have to change there. You know, we have to do it for ourselves and get off get out of this. The, this society we in right now, we gotta change that. We gotta come out of that. Then the word nigga, it's really gonna have no, it's gonna have no place in us in us in our vocabulary. Hmm. That's that interesting, brother. Okay, Analika, how can we get rid of the words, sis? Um, I would say, you know, educate ourselves, you know, and practice self-discipline. You know, like I said, I still got some work to do. Cause I do use it, so, but it's gonna get better. <laughs> right, right. So you think when you get around your buddies and they use that word, you can just may say queen. Yeah. And then you think you might be able to get them to change. I think so. That's a good story. I say, sis. I say. All right, Mama Julia. I think we teach in whatever setting we in. That's. What I try to practice with my family and my friends. We don't use that towards one another, but I say queen and goddess and sis, sister. Yes. So I hear them beginning to pick up on that and they do it. I so when they're with their friends, maybe they remember to do the same thing. Right. I, I think like Queen Analika said, it it's it takes time. You you can change it a little bit at a time. If right. you do it, they'll do it. Then they hear you, they respect you, they'll speak to you in the terms that you speak to them in. Yeah, I think each one, that, each one. Yeah, that that can change things. I don't think that the the words will ever go away though. Not like that. Okay. Not but everybody's I gonna go with us. Right, absolutely. But I, I think that's an excellent example of how we can show them rather than try to tell them. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's what my art is all about. And so, mm -hmm. you know, because sometimes you just kind of waste your time trying to tell a grown person something, but through your own actions and your own activity, they may change, especially, you know, if they trying to change and they just don't know how to. Mm -hmm. But if they're um, able to get around someone who is uh, making positive movement and speaking positively and living positively, they may can change, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about you, King Kari? What do you say? I agree with my brother about the dominant society changing it. And I'm gonna give you an example. When have you ever heard somebody been called a fag? We used to use that a lot. Are you mm -hmm. a fag? You get punished for saying fag. You can't tell a fag joke and use fag. That's true. So we put the punishment on nigga like we did fag. It goes away like 
that's a good, that's an excellent Get example. Tag on your Facebook page. See how long you last. Mm. You fag. That's powerful. That's powerful, brother. So it could be eliminated just like fag. Fag went away, what, 10 years? <laughs> right. You so, can't even a fag joke and you fag. Right. So when you when you say that word, though, the word has been replaced with words who they feel that who they community feel that are more acceptable. I agree. Now, listen, I listen, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, listen. So the word itself has dissolved. However, they still who they are, but they determine. Walk with me. They determine what word you're going to refer to them as. Ashe? Ashe. Ashe. And that's what we can do if we really want to do it. <laughs> you have to punish. There has to be a punishment. Okay. It's totally disappeared from the vocabulary. Right. Okay. So... Any last thoughts? This has been very informative. Um, I think we, we made a lot of good points. Um, we talked about a lot of different things. Any last thoughts or suggestions or conclusions? Uh, anybody want to share a story that they forgot to share earlier? Um, if so, go ahead and, and start if you would like. Anybody, any last words? I want to say, I just want to add on what I wanted to say earlier, you know, that it's a dominant society uh, that we live in and communication is an art at times. And yeah. considering what, what the word is coming, in, turning into now, mm -hmm. we just use it, you know, use it to, to we use it as a communication tool, you know, in, in that sense. With those who we know we can we can use it with. That's all I had to say. Okay. Mama Julie, you got anything for the closing? No, I I just think we work on it. We we keep doing the work that we're doing and we can see change within our own community, among our own people. And as you said, each one, reach one, teach one. We just keep right. doing what we're doing. I, this is a lifestyle for me. My family understands that and accepts that now. So I say. they communicate with me the way that I communicate with them. You know, we, our, the houses look different, homes look different inside. And they're no longer afraid to come to my house because aunt's on the wall. Now that they've taken the time to want to know what that is, and I've explained things to them, they feel better, they're comfortable now. So I think that's how we have to be with each other all the time. We have to make room for one another to yes. be comfortable. Yes, and they, and they respect you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Annalika, any last words, sis? Um, I would like to thank you for inviting me on the show. <laughs> and it, <laughs> and I've been trying great. to get you on the show for a minute, sis. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great to hear everyone's point of view on this topic and continue to speak truth fearlessly and continue to have peace and harmony amongst us. I say, I say. King Kyrie, what about you? Any last words? I agree with the sister. It's a pleasure to meet with those that I don't know. So two of you I first met here. Uh, it's kind of enlightening. I, I, I respect everybody's views. Last thing, uh, David Chappelle was on Saturday night and he used the word nigga on the show. Well, you know, he does, he does that a lot. Well, I, I, I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you know, I'm like, okay, let me see what they're talking about. I've seen them routines. I like some of his other jokes. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm like, man, he could do this? You know. I um, was using it, though. <laughs> you said what, Annalika? I said, I didn't know that he was still using it. 
Yeah, he did it on Saturday Night Live. And I'm like, whoa. They wow. He used it a lot. Yeah, but but we also have to uh, keep in mind that our children are watching us. And so, you know, they're like sponges. And of course, you know, we're, we're their examples. So right. if we want to see change, we have to change it. We have to teach it. And then we have to live it, Ashe. Ashe. So with that being said, I want to say, Dua, thank you so much to my panel for coming out and thank taking you. time to give your views and your thoughts about this topic. And whoa, it was a deep topic, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> yes, yes. Why do we accept nigger and bitch as words of endearment, family? <laughs> I so, think you should do this with some young people. Have this so, conversation with some young people and get their perspective. Well, you know what? I I don't want to call them young, but I I, I thought I had a good mix. <laughs> no, I mean some. You mean like twenty, um, like between 20... eighteen and and okay. thirty five year olds. Okay. Get their perspective on those words and. Right. Yeah, I, I'm sure it would be. Uh, yeah, a I little like different. A situation. Right. I say. I say. So I'll what I'm going to do now, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to say my regular uh, duas. Thank you. Thank you to our divine king, Saba Pianki, Patal Matula, Nefer Oman Ra for creating our shows, Voices of My Aunt channel, Makaru 314 channel, and Paradigm Shift 314. Please tune in, subscribe, and like the channels. We're educating, we're empowering, and we're edifying our people. Do it to our Baba Saba, Amari Sneferu of the Temple of Het Haru, the founder. Do it to my parents, Roy and Princella Small, for my existence. Do it to our elders, Rini Ankh, and uh, Queen Elder Regina Dennis Nana of the Temple of Het Haru. Do it to our Dr. Rakedi Amin for her wonderful teachings of the Meta Netter. Everyone, please stay safe, stay blacktastic, stay in love with you, stay in love with others. And I want to say, Shem M. Hotel, go in peace. Ashe. 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 Voices of my heart, voices of my heart, voices of my heart will evoke truth, justice, righteousness, reciprocity, balance. Order and harmony. Oh, to be conscious, gifted, and black. Conscious, gifted, and black.